Welcome to Lesson 6a, Derivation of the Vorticity Equation. In this lesson, we'll derive the vorticity equation in tensor notation. We'll also review some vector identities and make use of the epsilon delta relation. Fasten your seat belts. We're going to be doing lots of math with tensor notation. Let's start with the Navier-Stokes equation. We'll deal only with incompressible flow with constant properties. Let's apply a vector identity to this term. Namely, we can write it as del del xi of 1 half uj uj minus uj epsilon ij n omega n. We'll put this term on the right-hand side of the equation. Let's also do something we did with this term before. Namely, let rho gi equal negative rho del del xi of gz. That's true when g is down opposite to the direction of z. Let's rewrite this equation, where this term ended up on the right with a change in sign. We'll call this equation, equation 1. Now let's take the curl of equation 1. In vector notation, that's del cross equation 1. Or in tensor notation, we write epsilon kmi, del del xm, that's the cross product, operating on equation 1. Note that all these terms have a free index i which also occurs here. So we're summing on i and m, leaving free index k. So we'll end up with a vector equation with free index k in each term. When we perform this operation on each of these terms, we get rho times the quantity epsilon kmi, del del t, del ui, del xm. Notice that I switched the order of differentiation. Del del xm operating on del del t is the same as del del t operating on del del xm. In other words, the order of differentiation doesn't matter. The second term is epsilon kmi, del del xm, del del xi of 1 half uj uj. Notice that in this term, we're summing over j, i, and m, still leaving k as a free index. We'll put this term with the vorticity vector on the left. So our third term is epsilon kmi, del del xm, uj, epsilon ijn, omega n, and we'll close the brackets. We'll number these terms 1, 2, and 3. And since we've moved this term to the left side, there are three terms remaining on the right-hand side, namely negative epsilon kmi, del del xm, del del xi of the pressure, minus rho epsilon kmi, del squared gz, del xm, del xi where I use the del squared notation here instead of writing these out separately. We could have done the same thing here. Finally, the viscous term, mu epsilon kmi, del cubed ui, del xm, del xj, del xj. We'll number these terms 4, 5, and 6, and this entire equation we'll call equation 2. Let's examine each term separately to simplify this equation. Term 1 we'll rewrite as rho del del t epsilon kmi del ui del xm, where we've moved the epsilon term into the time derivative here, because epsilon is not a function of time, so we can put it here or here. The reason we did it this way was we recognized that this is the vorticity vector omega k. So term 1 is rho del omega k del t. Now let's try to simplify all the other terms. Let's look at term 2 next. Recall that epsilon kmi is anti-symmetric in m and i, which means if you change the order of these two indices, you get the negative of what you had in the beginning. This part, however, is symmetric in m and i. You can call mi an im, and it won't change this term at all, since the order of differentiation doesn't matter. Now recall from a previous lesson the contracted product of a symmetric and anti-symmetric tensor is zero. Therefore, term two is zero. We'll save term three for last since it's the most involved one. Moving on to term four then, we use the same argument as for term two. Namely, we're contracting the product of a symmetric and an anti-symmetric tensor. So term four is also equal to zero. Term five is also equal to zero. Now let's examine term six which I'll rewrite here. Again, epsilon is not a function of space or time, so we could move it inside the derivatives wherever we want. So we'll write this as mu 
del del xj, del del xj of epsilon kmi, del ui, del xm. Note that we also switched the order of the differentiation. Instead of mjj, we write jjm because the order of differentiation doesn't matter. Again, we recognize this as omega k. So term 6 becomes mu del squared omega k del xj del xj, which is the Laplacian of the vorticity vector. Finally, let's go back to term 3. Again, I'll write it out. Let's move this epsilon here. Again, since epsilon is not a function of space, so term 3 becomes minus rho epsilon kmi epsilon ijn del del xm of uj omega n. I'll mention briefly that it's good once in a while to check your indices. m is repeated, i is repeated, j is repeated, and n is repeated. k is the only free index, which is what we want. Now let's take these two epsilons and recall the epsilon delta relation of a previous lesson. We had written it as epsilon ijk epsilon klm equal delta il delta jm minus delta im delta jl. But we could use different indices here if we're careful. Namely, let's change all i to k and change all j to m, etc. So another way to write this is epsilon kmi epsilon ijn equal delta kj delta mn minus delta kn delta mj. So this grouping circled in purple can be written as this instead. So term 3 can be written as minus rho delta kj delta mn del del xm uj omega n minus delta kn delta mj del del xm uj omega n. Now let's do some fancy arguing here. Namely, we contract on the j and the k. Delta kj and this uj term are non-zero only if j equal k, by definition of the delta function. So the first part of equation 3 becomes delta mn del del xm uk omega n. But again, this one can contract since the term is non-zero only when m equal n. So we reduce to del del x n uk omega n. For the second term, we argue that this term is non-zero only if j equal m. So we have negative delta k n del del x j uj omega n. And this term is non-zero only when n equal k. So we have minus del del x j uj omega k. And we can close our brackets. Notice again that k is the only free index the n's and the j's are repeated indices. But it is more socially acceptable to have the indices match. You're right, Albert. Let's do that. We'll write it as negative rho del del xj of uk omega j minus del del xj of uj omega k. Now let's use the product rule on both of these terms. The first one splits up to uk del omega j del xj plus omega j del uk del xj. And the second one splits up similarly. But notice that this term is 0 for incompressible flow, which is what we are considering in this lesson. So that term goes away. Let's examine this term in more detail by writing out omega j. Choosing our indices wisely, we'll let omega j be epsilon imj del um del xi. Now move the epsilon outside of the derivative. Now let's make a similar argument as we did before. The two derivatives are symmetric in i and j, but epsilon is anti-symmetric in i and j. So this term is 0, and we're left with just these two terms. Finally, we write term 3 is minus rho omega j del uk del xj plus rho uj del omega k del xj. That's our term 3. Putting all of these terms together in their simplified form into equation 2 yields the following. Rho del omega k del t plus uj del omega k del xj equal rho omega j del uk del xj plus mu del squared omega k del xj del xj. But you may recognize this as the material derivative of omega k. We'll also let mu equal rho times nu, the kinematic viscosity, so that we can get rid of the density in each term. We end up with d omega k dt equal omega j del uk del xj 
plus nu del squared omega k del xj del xj. This is finally the vorticity equation for incompressible Newtonian flow with constant properties. If you prefer vector notation, d omega dt is omega dot del operating on u plus nu times the Laplacian of omega. We'll talk about the significance of each of these terms and of the whole equation in the next lessons. You can unbuckle your seatbelt now, Boris. 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 Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.